Hi guys and welcome back to my workbench. What you see in front of you is a new revised SCX Low Pro. Now, this design started with uh, somebody named Darien FPV coming to me and asking, could I make a slightly shorter SCX? And the idea behind it was that him and a couple of his buddies were running batteries mounted on the top and they wanted to bring the battery mass closer to the thrust line. So. That's uh, where this design started. Now, obviously, he gave me some requirements that uh, he wanted that would help, you know, accomplish that goal. And I said, let me take a look at it and see if I can do that. So I've designed into it some new features, which you're going to kind of, you might notice a couple of them are, are blatantly obvious, the top plate being one. Uh, but I want to go ahead and explain what the differences are between this and the normal SCX and just kind of catalog um, the challenges that, that it brought to the table compared to the normal SCX design. So, first of all, let's start with the top plate because that's the most obviously different part. Um, you can see the shape is fairly close to the normal SCX except for it's got two flat sides. That's to aid with mounting a battery strap so that you can put a battery on top if you really want to. Um, you'll also notice there's a cutout right here for the camera. And that all has to do with the height of the plates going down. I needed a little bit of clearance for the camera housing um, because there's this curve on the top of the HS1177 that would actually rub against the top plate if I didn't have that big cutout there. Lastly, you'll notice just like the 2.2 and the 2.3 kits that I have posted, the normal SCX 200s, it does have the antenna stinger with one small exception. I've added a hole in the back here so that if you want to pull your battery lead up and through there, it'll help protect it from swinging into the props. So you can see that's pretty much the top plate in a nutshell. Now I'll talk about some of the other features that were changed. Um, obviously the next thing that you're going to see is the plates for the cam and the VTX are shorter. So they look like they're squashed a little bit. Um, I basically just shortened everything 10 millimeters, so recontoured it to make it look nice. It's like it was designed to be that way. Now with the camera, there was a unique challenge to this camera, and uh, you can see I'm just using HS1177 with the stock mounting bolts or screws going through it. Now this is how I designed my original SCX, was just to hold on to the camera with the two screws, and I think it wasn't until Armatan asked me to do the Armatan light version for them that we incorporated part of their design which is pretty good I think that's these rubber dimes so now if you get an Armatan light kit you know what these are you've seen them they're basically a rubber isolator that you can lock the camera angle with they work really well I've also added them to my V 2.3 kits because some people really wanted them um, and there are slight differences between my kit and the Armatan light kit so I had to have my own version of it to make it work. So I would have loved to have done that here um, because they, they work really well. But because of the height difference, that bolting point gets closer to the stack of plates here. And if you've seen the Armitan light version or the V2.3, you know that the adjustment bolt swings down there in that direction. So by pushing that closer to the plate, it basically wouldn't have worked just because there wouldn't have been enough adjustment in it. So um, I had to design it this way with the shorter height to have just the two bolts. But I still wanted to have the camera angle locked. So what I did was I came up with a new system for locking camera angle that works with SCX. Now what you see in my hand is a camera angle wedge. And um, basically this piece slots into the frame vertically and butts up against the back of the camera to lock the camera angle. And the idea behind this is basically that if you hit something, if you crash, but you're not completely out of the game and you can still fly, sometimes your camera angle will change. And that could really screw you up because if you were flying with 45 degrees and now you got 15, everything seems weird. Even mixing your, your roll and your yaw together just doesn't feel the way it used to feel. So you want to be able to have that camera angle stay in place which is why you're going to have this camera wedge. Now with this frame, if you look closely on the bottom, you'll see that the opening is not um, as big underneath the camera and it's got this new webbing in it. You can also see a third slot. So this wedge slides in there into that third slot. 
And to change it, I'll just show you real quick. This will take me a second. I might do a real quick time lapse in the video. I'm just going to remove the top plate. So I've got the four screws out now. I'll just pop this top plate off, right? Go ahead and pull the camera out. And now you can see right here, there's your camera wedge, okay? You can see the mid plate has two little ears kind of that pop out and grab it. And then the bottom plate has a slot for it. And then all you have to do is pull this right out of here. And this one's a fairly tight fit just because um, it's a prototype. So the carbon, you know, I had to file it to fit. But you basically pop that out of there, pop in a different one of a different angle, and put it back together. Now, you can see I haven't quite finished this SEX. Um, I did start to build it. And uh, you can see it's really tight. So that kind of brings me to the next subject. So besides making everything smaller, it makes it a little bit lighter, um, brings the battery closer to the thrust line. The bigger challenge of this build is that you really have a lot less space. So you have to use a combined flight controller PDB in almost all cases. In fact, I, I don't know how you would build this thing without it. Now I'm using a Tempest, which is by Moto Labs, and this is a pretty good board. Um, it's an F3 processor, it'll run beta flight. You could also use like a Furious FPV Combini. Um, you could use something like a DTFC, um, which also has a built-in PDB. I happen to have one, but I haven't used it. But basically the gist of it is you need to combine those two boards into one because you're not going to have a lot of room to stack them. You're going to have enough room for that board, uh, your receiver, then your VTX still goes in there like normal, so that slots in the back. I can slot this in. So you can see there's really not a lot of space in there, so you really can't add a lot of components. So that's going to make this build really challenging. So if you're a first time builder um, and you're looking for something, this is probably, probably I'm going to say you don't want to try an SEX Low Pro. You'll probably want to stick to a normal SEX, which is going to have a lot more height in the stack to fit every component you're going to need, and it's going to give you a little more room for wiring too. So, just a note of warning, this, this frame is really intended for advanced builders, so, you know, make sure you can build tight and that you're comfortable doing wiring in tight places, and, uh, well, that's it. So anyways, um, let me put this back together real quick and uh, talk about the other thing that has to do with the camera mount. So, time lapse. So one last thing about the camera mount. Now I mentioned that this build is for advanced builders because of the space constraint. Um, you can see it's tight again, just showing you one more time. <laughs> but the reason why I say it's for advanced flyers as well is because the camera angle. Now, due to the height of the plates, the camera has to be tilted at a minimum of 35 degrees in order to fit. So. The way the kit's going to be packaged right now, I believe I'm going to include a 37 degree and a 45 degree camera wedge to lock the tilt. Um, but in general, this thing's not going to go below 35 degrees of camera tilt, even if you remove the, the cam lock. You can't push this down because the bottom edge of the camera will hit the bottom plate. So um, if you're not comfortable flying with high amounts of camera angle, and I, I mean, 40 degrees really isn't high nowadays. Most people fly at least 35, I want to say. Um, some people fly up to 60. But if you're not comfortable flying at least 35, um, this, this frame is probably not for you. Um, you know, with the original SCX and with the Armitan Lite version and even my V2.2s and 2.3 versions, you can go down in camera angle to like 15 degrees. So at 15 degrees, you can hover around and fly fairly slowly with you know, most it's very comfortable, but with this frame, you're not going to be able to do that. 
Now, it shouldn't be a problem for most people, especially nowadays, we're all flying 2.5 or 2.1 lenses typically. You don't see as many people flying 2.8 anymore. So with that bigger field of view, being at 40 degrees, 45 degrees is not as big of a deal because you can still see the horizon pretty well in most, most situations. So um, that's it. That's the gist, the overall overview of the SCX 200 Low Pro. Like I said, this is for advanced builders and advanced flyers. Um, and then the main, the main goal behind this was to get the battery, the weight of the battery, closer to the thrust line. So um, you can still bottom mount the battery, and I'm going to do that. Um, and this kit is going to be a little bit lighter, but not much. Most of the weight savings is going to come with the electronics, because you are going to use the PDB flight controller combo, it's going to save you a little bit of weight and wiring. So it's going to be marginally lighter. And uh, if you're really a hardcore racer, you want to run a top mounted battery, this frame might be the, a good choice for you. So anyways, uh, keep watching. I'm going to release this on Armitan pretty soon. I've got a couple people testing these frames. And uh, if they give me any feedback that requires some changes, I'll make the changes quick and hopefully in another week or two um, I can post these to Armor Tan Productions and then everybody else can try them out and tell me what they think of them. Thanks. Bye.